Okay, the live stream on, on uh, Periscope has been working really well. Yeah, Periscope, that's why I told you about Periscope. So we are live. Go ahead and take your seats, folks. We're getting started. Those of you who are, are tuning in, um, I apologize. We're starting early because the sun is setting. We got church members at home right now that are probably surprised to find out that uh, we're starting early, but it's it's going down and and well, I have uh, a little bit of sermon notes to cover, so. The title of our sermon is coming from the Beatitudes, Matthew 5. The title is, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> and this sermon um, is for everyone, but someone in, in particular uh, needs to be reminded that when you think that you don't have enough faith, or you think that you're losing it, you're actually good company. So we're going to be doing our reading from Hebrews 11, and I say that in, in all fairness because, well, believers from the beginning of time have had struggles, and even the most faithful um, fell short. So let's pray, and then we'll get into the reading. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for the opportunity to serve you in this beautiful country and bring the gospel. We are grateful for those ten salvations. We pray that they are diligent in serving you. Lord, we thank you for the fellowship, and we ask that you bless this message. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. amen. So we're reading from Hebrews 11, and we'll start in verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. And we all know this one. We've heard it often. And at you as the believer... You weren't in the presence of Christ. So your faith is based upon something you don't see. Your hope is based upon something you don't see. However, the evidence will be in your life. For by the elders obtain a good report through faith, we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So everything you see around you evidence of God's hand and we see some wonderful things in his creation by faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous God testifying of his gifts and by it he being dead yet speaketh by faith Enoch was translated and then he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation, he had this testimony that he had pleased God. Now that, that term translated just means that he is no longer here. Uh, he lived 365 uh, years and God said, oh, it's time for you to come home. And he just raptured him. Uh, it's a very unusual moment because it was just one particular person. They don't give you a lot of story behind it. And somebody else wrote a ridiculous fictional story uh, called The Book of Enoch. and. People have gone crazy over giants and Nephilim. Uh, but that's not the subject of today's sermon. Continuing on, I want to particularly point out some people that are exuding faith in this chapter and understanding that you're in good company when you think that you're losing yours. But without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarded of them diligent, that diligently seek him. By faith Noah was warned of God of things not seen, as yet moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and be, became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith Abraham, 
when he was called to go out to, into a place which he had, he should, after receive an inheritance, obeyed and went out not knowing whither he went. Is the live stream still working? Yes. Okay. So, <clears throat> Abraham is one of those people that I want to uh, point out to you. Because it's, that, it would say connecting. Uh, well, he didn't have that much faith. I mean, you know, he was very faithful, okay, but when God told him that he was going to have a child, yeah. and he's like, well, my wife's, you know, old, and I'm old, well, then he decided that he was going to become an adulterer and listen to his wife and get with Hagar. So where's the faith there? So he's not trusting that God's going to provide him from his own loins and his, his wife's loins a child. He's not faithful enough. See, even the most faithful people that God considers faithful. He's saying it right here in the Bible. You will lose faith from time to time and do things that are just foolish. By faith he sojourned <clears throat> in the land of promise as, a, as, in, as in a strange country dwelling in a tabernacles which Isaac and Jacob, the arrows which him of the same promise. For he looked for cities which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself conceived strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky multiplied, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not ha having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them and embraced them, and confessed that they were, they, they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such... And that burned with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest, the sound of the trumpet and the voice of words, which voice they had heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them any more. For they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so, much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. You remember that from this morning's message. But ye are unto Mount Sion, come unto Mount Sion, and unto the city of the living God, and the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, the general assembly and the church of the firstborn, which was written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and the spirits of just men made perfect. Now keep in mind the firstborn you're talking about is the Christ, okay, uh, being the uh, the first only begotten son and then those who believe on the Lord you are now sons and daughters as well and to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh uh, better things than that of Abel again Christ is our only mediator uh, see that ye refuse not him that speaketh for if they escape not uh, who refuse him that spake on the earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word yet once more signifieth the removing of the things that are shaken, and of the things which are made, and the things that which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore we receive a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. So I want to stress to you that if you're in this position where you're thinking you're losing your faith for whatever circumstances of your life, you feel that God is distant. The psalmist talks about this. God never left. He's still here. He's still in you, working in you. Although your mind and heart may be thinking otherwise. He never left. You're not alone because these people that I'm telling you about, I'm going to go over some things with you that you need to understand regarding people like Abraham and Sarah. People that were even in the presence of Christ. They're in the presence of God in the flesh. They doubt it. If you like, turn with me to Mark. One of my favorite stories because it's, it's 
it, it has numerous applications. Turn with me to Mark chapter 4. Those of you who are tuning in, um, it's been extremely windy, so thank God it's, it's tuned down a little bit so I can uh, give you this message this evening. Mark chapter 4, and we're going to start in verse 35. You may be familiar with this story already. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. In the same day, when even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side, Christ speaking, crossing the sea of Cali. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were, all, were also with him uh, uh, other little ships. And so there was a whole group of people caravanning across the, the sea. And arose a great storm and wind, and the waves beat, up the, beat into the ship, so that it was now full, so the water is now inside the ship. This is a moment in your life you've got to put yourself in this position you know that there's struggles and and trials and tribulations in your life that it can seem like you're sinking there's no hope and he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow well he's God folks the storm is his he owns it so why else would he not sleep? It's like rocking him to just soothing. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? God, why is this happening to me? Why can't you take me out of these circumstances? Why is these things burdening my mind and my heart? And he rose and he rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they're in the presence of God. They've touched him. So, how much greater is your situation considering that you have to exist by faith and trust without seeing it? You know, I went through a terrible time with my wife not too long ago. And I had to praise God in the moment that I found out the horrible news. And it's a difficult thing for a person to do when you experience such loss. How do you praise God? How do you praise God when something horrible happens and something ripped out of your life that you care about? How do you praise Him? You do. You open your mouth and you say, thank you, Lord. It sounds crazy, but you'll be surprised at how quickly things become calm. The seas settles. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show, show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. James 2.18. Keep in mind that chapter is regarding the Christian outwardly expressing the, the fact that they are reborn. Um, and we as Christians ought to show our faith. This is a duty. You don the title of Christ. So it is not an easy task, but we are commissioned to do so. So how do we start this? And, and folks, faith is apart from understanding. You need to understand this. This is a very, <laughs> I, it sounds kind of funny, but faith is apart from understanding. So you have to put your trust in something you don't see, things that you don't understand. Well, why does the Bible say this? Why does God say these things? Well, you have to trust Him because we're commanded to do so. And the reality is that sometimes our own mind and heart projects these, these thoughts and feelings upon what we see in God's Word, and we're like, how could he do that? Some things I'm going to cover today are going to be eye-opening. Okay? Some things you may already know. So if, we're, if you're leaning on your own understanding, there's a verse specifically for you. And I'm sure you've heard it. Lean not on your own understanding. Our, our Lord and Savior knows a lot more. The circumstances that you're in right now, you're thinking, how catastrophic is this? 
I think God is so far away from me right now. And really, you're still in his hand. He says that in the book of John chapter 10. You will never be taken out of my hand. You'll never be taken out of my Father's hand who's greater than me. Again, I'm paraphrasing. But you understand that no matter what's going on in your life, He has complete control of that. There's something going on that you are unaware of. And, it, and it's hard. You're like, why is this happening? Why is this happening? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on thine own, on on own understanding. You're commanded, if you love me, keep my commandments. And one of them is to trust God. Christ says you have to trust me. Be strong and of good courage. This is actually from the Lord's Mount, Deuteronomy 31, 6. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And you're, I'm telling you, I've been there. I know what it's like. You're thinking, he's just not here anymore. I don't feel him. I don't see him. I don't. I feel lost. I feel alone. <clears throat> the Almighty God created what is known as the largest star, uh, which is seven. 1,808 times the size of our sun. How big is that God? And how, how much bigger is He than the situations that are going on in your life, in your heart, in your mind? Why can't we trust Him? He's proven Himself faithful to yeah, us every keep, time. One day is your salvation okay. secure? Yes. So all these things that are happening in your life, that you're buried under. The psalmist talks about it as if it's a wave crashing on top of you. The psalmist also says that God is in control of that wave. Commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. Proverbs 16.3 So sometimes it, it takes merely just getting out of your head to get things sorted out. It's hard. And I've said this before, I, I may have even mentioned it in the sermon this, sermon this morning, that we ought to be working. Because you know what, our mind can do horrible things to ourselves and, and, and really drag us down sometimes. What if? What if this happens? Why did this happen? How come they're doing this to me? How come they're saying this? So I encourage you to work. I don't care what it is. I, I would encourage you to do the Lord's work. Bringing the gospel will change things. In fact, the Lord offers a promise in John uh, chapter 15. John chapter 15 tells us that if we do this, we bear fruit for him, he will purge us. And as we know, that purging is referring to sins in our life. But it also could be other things. He doesn't say specifically, but you can make that assumption. So, if you're working, you're not thinking about those things that are burdening you. Fill your life up. You can do seven days a week, something, there's always something to do. If you're sitting in a hole, you're going to be constantly thinking about those things. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy sh thoughts shall be established. So, even if it's, you have a job, you have a nine to five, and you pick up more hours, or if you... Focus harder on, on being more excellent in your work. Because remember, you're supposed to be not doing it unto that boss, but in, in Colossians it says we're supposed to be doing it unto God. There's little time to go astray. There's little time to lose trust if you're constantly uh, preoccupied. This is also a call for you to come back to the Word. And who is the Word? See, oftentimes, this is the whole premise behind the, the terminology of Christ being the good shepherd. He hasn't left. It's the sheep that won. You ever seen a shepherd's staff shaped like a hook? Well, that's because it can wrap around a, a sheep's neck and the shepherd pulls him away. Pulls him away from something, whether it be something to danger them, or they're just wandering off because they found something tasty to gnaw on. 
to call for you to come back. And if you're in the Word, you'll find that there is reward even just in spending time reading. You don't have to pick out something in particular to study. Just open a Bible and start reading. Start in Matthew. Start in Philemon. Wherever your heart desires, just read. I often, when I'm in a, in a really, really bad rut, I'll start at Psalm 1 and go through all 156 chapters. Yeah. Sometimes that's what it takes. Are you still trusting in your own knowledge because it, it seems right in your mind? What you think is right in your mind doesn't make a truth. There's a lot of things we as Christians have to accept as truth. A great example is God the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost are three distinct persons with voices of their own, yet they're all in one Godhead. The Trinity is hard to, for a Christian, a non-Christian, can't even fathom it. But a person who's saved, it's hard to comprehend this, this concept of our triune God. Sometimes you just have to take it in faith. And that's a tough doctrine for a lot of people, but we trust it. Here's another tough one. What if someone in a far up jungle has never heard of Christ? The Bible says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Acts 4.12. So if they don't know Christ, do they go to hell? Does God send those people to hell that are in the deep jungles of India? God is much bigger than we can possibly comprehend. Much bigger. So if you're trying to rationalize what you're reading in Scripture, that nobody has an excuse, and everybody must hear the word of Christ, then what happens if they don't? What if, what if, what if? For those that struggle with this what if, come with me to Revelation chapter 5. Is God love? Yes. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9. And this is us, basically, you know. Uh, and they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred, tongue, and people, and in every nation. Every kindred, every tongue will be in heaven. That doesn't mean everybody will be there, but it means that the entire earth will know who Jesus Christ is. Understand? So there is no, everybody gets a chance. God wishes that none would perish. I don't know exactly how this is all going to transpire. I'm not there yet. I don't know even if they'll all be on the planet at that time. God only knows. And, and we don't have to know everything. We don't have to know all the answers. How is this going to transpire? Is it going to be because soul winners are just going to go up and massively go out into every, every corner of the earth? Well, they are working it now, but is it possible for them to reach everybody? I don't know. I don't know what God has planned. It sounds, un it sounds almost impossible to, to do these things, especially when missionaries are getting killed in some of these places just for <laughs> showing up. How does everybody hear the word? More proof of this? Come with me to Mark. One of my favorite verses because it acknowledges the fact that everyone will know. Mark 13, 10. Nobody's going to be lost in the respect that they're not going to have an opportunity to hear the gospel. Okay, this is talking about Christ returning. And in, in verse 10 it says, And the gospel must first be published among all nations. So this Bible will be everywhere. Whether, whether it is in the a, in a form of an iPod, uh, one of those... Um, jump drives like they're doing uh, these missionaries are, are sneaking the Bible into countries that uh, it's illegal to have a Bible they'll put it on a SIM card for your cell phone 
to try and get them in. I've heard stories about people putting entire printing presses inside of cases of beer in order to get it to countries so they can print their own Bible. Smuggling Bibles. Smuggling Bibles has been going on for some time now. It's actually been going on since Tyndale. When Tyndale uh, told the, the Catholic Church that he's going to make sure every plowboy can understand God's word, that's when it started. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. Are you trusting in yourself? Are you trusting in somebody else? Other than our Lord and Savior? And maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Jeremiah 17, 5. So when we start going down this rabbit hole, you're in the rabbit hole. Your heart is departing from God. It's not that He's ever left you. You turned. And, and you're sitting there in this, this horrible, dark place. Where are you, Lord? I need you. And you're the one that left. All you have to do, one, call upon Him, first and foremost. You have the right to do this. When, folks, when, when that moment at Calvary happened, when Christ gave up the ghost, the veil between this world and the Holy of Holies, the throne room of God was rent in two. So it, it no longer, you have to go to the, the rabbi back then to, to be able to uh, speak to God. You can go before the throne. And again, this is things that are unseen, so it's all in your heart and mind that you're experiencing that moment before the throne of God. You're petitioning the throne. Lord, help me. Even if it's just a moment where you're, you're such a, in such a dark place or if your circumstances, your life have turned in such a, a horrible direction, call upon the Lord. You have the right to petition the throne of God, go before the Father, and it's because of Christ. <clears throat> Reach out to a brother or a sister. Hey, look, can we just talk? I need a minute. I don't even care if we're talking about the subject that is burdening my heart. What happened in your day? Get me off of this thing that's eating away at me. Read your Bible. Like I said, I literally will have to go through the entire book of Psalms sometimes to just get my head straight. Now, if you're still trusting your own wisdom or someone else's, you're in for a bumpy ride. It's going to get harder and harder and harder. It doesn't get brighter down that tunnel at all. We often say the faith is trusting in Jesus' finished work uh, upon the cross. We do this every time we go soul winning. That Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, when it says, By faith, that is completely trusting in Christ's finished work. Now, here's the hard part with that. Were you there? 500 other people were. Four men of God accounted for this. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But here's the thing. Five other people accounted this who are not even Christians. So you have nine people that have witnessed Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. There is no other account in history that is that validated. So if you don't believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, then you're just deluding yourself. But we weren't there. We still have to put our faith and trust in this. 500 eyewitnesses. None other has survived such detail and greatly surpassing the Iliad of the Odyssey. The great, one of the greatest works, apparently. The Bible has surpassed that. The gospel has surpassed that. We as men and women still in the flesh still battle. And we do have our work cut out for us. It's not easy. Losing faith is easy. We are tempted constantly. Even the apostles were in presence of God, their faith was shaken. You know, everybody talks about Peter sinking in the water. But what about the other 11 on the boat who didn't have enough faith to get out of the water? 
Number one, our own minds can be our worst enemy. Focus on serving, ladies, focus on serving your husbands if you're in that position. Likewise, you wives, be subjection to your own husbands that if any obey not the word, that they also may without the word be won by the conversation of their life. First Peter 3 1. Care for your children. If you're struggling with something in your life, focus on your kids. They will be very grateful, I can assure you. The Bible says, We were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherishes her child, 1 Thessalonians 2 7. So a mother has a great deal of gentleness in her approach to children. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. The mother gives guidelines, and, and she is there to uh, protect her child, Proverbs 1.8. You know, for women having nine to five jobs, it often creates more stress and worry in their life. For women who work, it causes more stress in their life. So, that instance requires a lot more. You have to take the time, get up 30 minutes earlier and, and pray and read your Bible. Men ought to be up early and work until you're finished. I'm not talking about finishing the job, I'm talking about you being finished. If you're not working till you're spent, folks, you're gonna be in a, in a world of hurt constantly spinning your wheels in that dark place. The Bible says that we ought to work six full days and rest on one. Men, work yourselves to the bone if you have to. It's worth it. When you get home, you should just fall on that pillow and just sleep. It's Sometimes that's what it takes to get your mind off of the nonsense. Mind off of things that aren't nonsense, that are just truly crushing your heart. Come with me to Ephesians chapter 6. I hope that you spend a lot of time here, especially when you're struggling. Ephesians chapter 6 is a good one. Ephesians chapter 6. We'll read 5 through 7. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling and singleness of your heart as unto Christ. So you should be serving your, the people that you work for. Really quick, folks, when it talks about servants in, in the Bible, it is no different than you having a job today. Except in some cases, the servants are really well taken care of. Like anybody who, who worked for Abraham, well, they're they now are part of the heirs to, to the promise. So uh, you can't get that from your regular job. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall be received of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. Work hard, serve as if you are working for the Lord. Are you spending enough time with brethren? Point number two and how to handle this darkness. Keep in mind, you as the person that are weak in spirit, yours is the kingdom. Are we spending enough time with brethren? I can tell you for myself, I don't spend enough time with brethren. I wish I could spend more. This this world prevents us from truly having uh, a great relationship with brothers and sisters. Did I just feel rain? No, no. Felt like I had a drop of, of uh, water. <laughs> There's not a cloud in the sky. You hit him from the tree. It was sad. Broken. <laughs> you don't have to turn there. I'm going to uh, read to you from uh, Colossians 2. That their hearts might be comforted, being knit together, talking about brethren, in love, and all the riches and fullness, assurance, understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. Mystery. We don't know what's going on in the spirit world, in the supernatural realm. We have no idea that all the craziness.
this is going on in our life, there, there could be any number of things that could be happening. And I'm not saying that's always the case, but there, that's the reality that is possible. And we must be mindful that God's in control of that, and we ought to be, as it says, knit together. In whom are hid all the treasures and wisdom and knowledge, and this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit, joying and beholding in your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. This is why I said earlier when I was talking about that horrible situation in my life, I had to give thanks. And I didn't know how, I just, it came out of my mouth. I had to thank God for that situation. We realize anyone to spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, at the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. This is the, the voice of the psychologist talking. You go and look into books uh, about psychology to try and figure out what's going on in your life. How do I fix this? The Bible's telling you. Let any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men and rudiments in the world. So where them dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Fullness. Okay. Folks, it, 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 it's, again, this is a hard thing to imagine. And, and some of you get it. Some of you realize God is that big. And he has complete control of everything. And I can just march through my life with complete and utter faith. And other people go, yeah, God is that big, but I'm still hurting inside. Stop it. Honor all. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. First Peter 2.17. Point number three in how to get yourself out of this dark hole. He told us to watch. But how far down the rabbit hole do we go? There's things in this world that if you're paying attention to them, can turn you upside down, can literally make you mad. Some things you should just avoid. And I know there's plenty of brethren in this church, that this tiny little church, that know more than, than they really ought to. It's hard when you see these things, the atrocities that are happening to children, the uh, whole subterfuge going on within our, our own nation, and all this interwoven evil that's going on. And you see it, and you ingest it, but it makes you sick. And sometimes you'll make you lose sleep. Sometimes it'll make you... Well, lose faith. This is the devil's word. Even the most strong in spirit are shaken by the evil therein. When considering who should run the race, do you choose the man who is experienced, experienced and skilled or the man who has a broken foot? If you know your faith is even as a touch shaky at times, if you know your faith is touch shaky at times, get out of the ring. Shut it off. Turn off the computer. Put the books down. Spend your time in prayer. Maybe even fasting. That's a good way to get close to God. You find yourself sometimes overwhelmed by the diabolical mind that conspires against us at every turn. Should we rather abide in the shadow of Christ the King? Last week's sermon should have made uh, the hair stand up. But when I talk to you about standing in the shadow of Christ, it's like a child standing behind their parents when something is in danger. So when you're in that position, why aren't you behind Christ? Why aren't you in a shadow? The Bible says that's where we ought to be, under his wing. And in closing, I'm going to take you to Psalm 91, my beloved Psalms. Mm 
something? Psalm chapter 91. Thank you, Lord, for keeping the sun. <laughs> Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. In Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He that covereth thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrows that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, and the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet, because he hath set love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him, and I will be with him in trouble. I will be with, deliver. I will deliver him and honor him. I will, with, with long life, will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. You don't have to know everything. I don't have to know everything. And I don't have to pretend that I do. But I do have to tell you these things. You can trust in the Lord. And there's nothing too big that's going on in your life that he cannot handle. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that our, our brethren are, are edified and, and they reach out to you in this time that they are struggling, that they call upon you and give themselves unto that faith and ask, Lord, please give me a double portion of faith because I have none. Lord, you ask of us to have faith of a mustard seed and we know how tiny that is. But these times we seem to struggle. Bless us, Lord, with insurmountable faith. And let us understand that we don't have to know all. We can trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.